There's always a mystery when an ancient artifact is discovered. Sometimes that mystery can be solved quickly by consulting experts or using the assistance of technology. On other occasions, the mystery lasts a little longer. And those are the discoveries that interest us the most. We're going to check out a few of those discoveries in this video. Eve's footprint isn't literally the footprint of Eve, the biblical figure. There's no evidence that the Eve of the Bible ever existed. Instead, it's the name of a set of footprints that were found on the shores of Langaban Lagoon in South Africa in 1995. The footprints are those of a female human and were left behind approximately 117,000 years ago. That makes them the oldest known surviving footprints of any anatomically modern human. The footprints have only survived for this long because they were made in a steep sand dune during a heavy rainstorm. Dry sand blew over the footprints shortly after they were made, filling in the prints and then burying them 30 feet below the shoreline. The woman who made these footprints lived during the time that Homo sapiens first emerged on planet Earth. Each print is eight and a half inches long, meaning that she'd have been a size seven and a half shoe in the United States of America. Later investigations of the same era turned up stone tools that are thought to date to the same period. Eve's footprint being the oldest ever found doesn't mean that Eve was the first modern human though. Someone must have given birth to her. So the focus is now on finding who came before Eve. Where is the head of King Henry IV? That's a mystery that's been troubling the people of France for a very long time. We know that the former king was dragged out of his grave during the French Revolution and then symbolically beheaded before being tossed into a mass grave. But what happened to the head after its detachment from the body is unknown. There's a long-standing story that it was eventually found in the attic of a retired French tax inspector, but that's thought to have been an urban myth. King Henry was arguably a poor choice of target for the revolutionaries. There were many tyrannical kings and queens of France, but Henry IV wasn't one of them. He was known as Good King Henry and is credited with bringing the country together during the 17th century. He once pledged to ensure that every worker in his country could afford to have a chicken in their pot every Sunday. The tax inspector in this story is one Jacques Bellinger, who claimed to have bought the head privately in 1953. However, Bellinger's head still contains a brain, which would normally have been removed by the royal embalmer prior to burial. The mystery of the location of the king's head continues. Our next discovery is no less controversial. In 1999, a retired real estate investor by the name of Hubert Zeitelmeier claimed to have discovered a megalithic temple underwater not far from the coast of St. Julian's on the island of Malta. The site of the discovery is now known as Gabel Golbahar. Some archaeologists have poured scorn on the idea that his discovery is a temple, claiming instead that it's nothing more than a natural rock formation. But there has never been a full archaeological exploration of the area, and nobody seems to know why. It doesn't help that Zeitelmeier was a known follower of Zachariah Sitchin, who believed in ancient astronaut theory and was the first to write about the existence of a mythical planet called Nibiru. That made it easy for experts to write Zeitelmeier off as a crank. He also claimed to have been guided to the discovery by the goddess Ashtar Tara, Queen of Atlantis so that didn't help his case much either. To make matters worse, subsequent dives have been unable to look at the temple, not even dives involving Zeitelmeier himself. We like to keep an open mind where possible, but the credibility of this tale is really pushing it. The near destruction of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris after a huge fire in 2019 was a tragedy, but it's a tragedy that's allowed archaeologists to investigate the site in a way that was never possible while the cathedral was open. One of the more remarkable discoveries made at the site is a strange leaden sarcophagus that was discovered deep in the bowels of the cathedral. Archaeologists believe the sarcophagus dates to the 14th century, but there's no inscription on its surface, so they have no idea who might be inside it they hope to answer that question by opening the sarcophagus in the near future. 
the presence of the sarcophagus within the cathedral appears to have been a secret. It was 65 feet below the ground and hidden by the brick pipes of a heating system that was installed during the 19th century. This is the only burial that's been identified within the cathedral. Burial in this famous building would have been an enormous honor, and so we can safely assume that this person was of significant importance during their lifetime, which only makes it all the stranger that they appear to have been forgotten by history. American President Abraham Lincoln, like many of the socially elite men of his era, owned a gold pocket watch. Inside that pocket watch was a secret message, but it's very unlikely that the president ever even knew that it was there. The engraving is inside the watch's mechanism and was left behind by watchmaker Jonathan Dillon. In a brief message dated by Dillon to April 13, 1861, the inscription says, Fort Sumter has been attacked by rebels. Thank God we have a government. It's a reference to the start of the American Civil War, which began when Confederates opened fire on Fort Sumter in Charleston. Dillon was repairing the watch when the news broke and decided to record it within the piece. Lincoln would have carried the message around in his pocket for the rest of his life without ever being conscious of doing so. The inscription was only found when Doug Stiles, the great-great-grandson of Jonathan Dillon, informed the National Museum of American History was there. Prior to that, it had been a family secret for more than a century. Hiding beneath Fuxian Lake in China is what's claimed to be the remains of a great pyramid, one that might have been built long before the famous ones in Egypt. Fuxian Lake is enormous, covering more than 100 square miles in the Yunnan province and over 500 feet deep at its deepest point. The first signs of the suspected pyramid were identified and photographed by diver Zhang Wai in 1992. When he returned to the site with professional archaeologists, they also found walls, roads, earthenware, and what appear to be stairways. More important than that, though, is what looks a lot like a 70-foot-tall human-made pyramid of a similar style to those built by the ancient Mayans. The stepped pyramid has five stories and is stepped, with a base around 110 feet wide. Some historians dispute these claims, and while they acknowledge that there are ruins of some kind under the lake, ruins that must have been down there for thousands of years, they say that those who see the remains of a pyramid are simply seeing what they want to see. Who's in the right here? Has the shape of this once grand building been misinterpreted? Or is there really a lost pyramid at the bottom of this lake that dates back to the end of the last ice age? Now we travel to Israel, where strange engravings of ships were found on the sides of an ancient water cistern in the city of Beersheba in 2018. The enormous cistern, which is almost 40 feet deep, is a product of the region's Roman era. That makes it about 2,000 years old, and experts think that the graffiti-like engravings on its side are about the same age. Many of the etchings are little more than crude depictions of animals and humans, but the representations of boats are surprisingly detailed and accurate. In fact, some historians think that whoever made these drawings had at least a basic understanding of ship construction. It's not impossible for such a person to have lived near here all that time ago, but someone with such knowledge of ship construction would surely be helping to build ships in coastal regions, rather than living in the middle of the desert. The other remarkable thing about this discovery is that it survived long enough to be discovered. Ammunition shells from the First World War were discovered in the sediment around the cistern, along with pieces of weapons. Had the cistern been hit, the graffiti would have been destroyed. There have always been myths and legends about a long-lost race of giant humans in Ecuador just as there have been ancient stories about giants in almost every other part of the world. In 2013, archaeologist Bruce Fenton claimed to have found a lost city, created by giants deep in the Ecuadorian jungle. Fenton's discovery is that of an enormous pyramid, some 260 feet tall and 260 feet wide at the base, built from thousands of two-ton blocks of stone that are evenly cut 
and evenly spaced. Fenton also says that he found huge tools in the area, too large to have been wielded by regular humans. Scientists have tried to dismiss the discovery by claiming the pyramid is nothing but a natural rock formation, but that wouldn't explain the circles cut through the middle of some of the stones. Is there a more rational explanation, though? Some archaeologists think that, rather than this being a city of giants, it's the mausoleum of Atahualpa, the last emperor of the Inca. He was captured and executed by the Spanish, but legends say that his body was returned to his people, and he was buried in a secret location surrounded by mountains of gold. Maybe all that gold is still there inside the pyramid. The metalwork of the famed Renaissance-era sculptor Filippo Negroli was described by the writers of the 16th century as being miraculous and worthy of immortal merit. There are many fine examples of why the talented artist was deserving of such high praise, but none more so than the Bourgeonnet that's currently in the collection of the Met Museum in New York, USA. This gorgeously decorated helmet is formed from just one plate of steel that's been delicately painted to make it appear more like bronze. The high-relief bowl of the helmet is covered in motifs connected to classical art, and the mermaid that forms the helmet's comb turns into the snarling head of Medusa if you follow it along to the end. It's hard to imagine how Negroli could get so much detail into such a relatively small piece. The helmet is thought to have been made in Milan, Italy in 1543, and is one of several he made at the time that are known to have survived. None of them can quite match the beauty of this one, though, and it's no wonder that the museum went to such trouble to obtain it. There are very few solid pieces of information that we or anybody else can give you about the Novilara Stile. We know that it was made around 2,600 years ago, and we know that it was found close to Novilara in Italy. We also know that the inscriptions on its surface are written in a variant of the Etruscan language known as North Piscine. Beyond that, everything is speculation. The reverse of the stele shows a hunting scene, so the text might be a description of that, or might not be associated with it at all. The fact that the letters are Etruscan means that we can read them individually, but we don't understand the words. That's only part of the mystery, though. We also don't know where the North Piscine language came from, or who spoke it. Because of that, we don't have any idea who made the Novarilla Stile. They might have been a branch of the ancient Etruscan civilization, or they might have been a totally different civilization in their own right. Hundreds of academics have tried to translate the Stile in the 130 years since it was found, but none have succeeded. When we hear the word labyrinth, we automatically think of the myth of the Minotaur and the great labyrinth of Crete. The labyrinth is thought to have been a Greek invention, as evidenced by the labyrinth patterns that have been found on multiple clay tablets in Pylos, Greece. The oldest of the tablets is around 3,200 years old. It's still likely that the Greeks invented the concept of the labyrinth, but archaeologists would still like a good explanation of the 56-square-foot stone labyrinth that was found in Jedamidu, India in 2015. Researchers from Virarajendran Archaeological and Historical Research Center say that the labyrinth follows the exact same pattern laid out on those ancient Greek clay tablets. It's the second largest labyrinth ever to be found in India, and might also be the oldest, with an estimated age of 2,000 years. The location is close to an important ancient trade route, but historians aren't sure whether those facts are connected. It's thought that the ancient inhabitants of India thought of the labyrinth as a fertility symbol, but this isn't proven, and, in any case, wouldn't explain the purpose of this labyrinth. We don't know much more about tomb KV-55 in the Egyptian Valley of the Kings today than we did when archaeologists opened it in 1907. The one body found inside the tomb has never been identified, and that's just the start of the problem. The body was found surrounded by artifacts and grave goods, but they all appear to be associated with different people. There's a gilded wooden shrine inscribed with a dedication to Queen Tai in one place, 
but there are also a pair of clay bricks marked with the name of Akhenaten. The casket is marked with the cartouche of Queen Kia, but its occupant is male. If there's a clue to be found anywhere here, it's the fact that the DNA of the male is very similar to the DNA of Tutankhamun. That means it could be Smenkare, Tutankhamun's brother. Smenkare was to be the heir to Akhenaten, so a connection with him makes sense too. The presence of items connected to Queen Kia and Queen Tai remains unexplained. It's almost as if someone hastily threw a corpse and a load of mixed up burial goods into a tomb thousands of years ago and then sealed it up before anyone found out what they'd done. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.